everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tacoma Cyclist. I'm Tacoma Cyclist, and with me as usual is my sidekick, the Boogeyman. We'll unveil him today. His name is actually Will, since so many of you have commented that calling him the Boogeyman is creepy. Um, he is creepy, so that's why I call him the Boogeyman. Uh, actually, for what it's worth, our last name in Spanish means Boogeyman. So that's where he gets the nickname. We're not Spanish, we're Italian, but whatever. So uh, we're here today to talk about a couple really important things um, on the end of your feet. They're called your shoes and how to take care of your shoes. Um, I see a lot of folks that go through cycling shoes way too often and they get destroyed and they get nasty, they get gross and that's just, that's just bad. Um, don't get gross shoes. Don't, don't wear gross shoes. That's just, that's wrong. Uh, I will say that uh, in the world of cycling, there is absolutely nothing, nothing more pro than white shoes, white socks. Uh, and shoes are expensive. Cycling shoes are, are not cheap. Um, it's funny, I've got a couple really high-end, nice pairs of dress shoes that I spent absolute boatloads of money on. Allen Edmonds, they're great. Uh, but they're still cheaper than my cycling shoes. Uh, and I, I get a lot of use out of my cycling shoes, probably more so than I do out of my dress shoes. These things are not cheap. Uh, a good pair of cycling shoes will set you back starting $250, $300, all the way up to $600, $700 and beyond. And you wanna make sure that they last and that you take care of them. So we're gonna talk about what we do to take care of our, our shoes. And as you see here, we both have a pair of white CDs. Um, both of our shoes have well over 10,000 miles on them, uh, both of our sets of shoes. Now his are a little bit uh, more dirty right now than mine are, um, but it's because I'm a clean freak. Uh, and even still, mine aren't where I really want them to be, but I'm going to take you through some of the cleaning that we would do on a regular basis. Now, how regular are we talking here? Um, obviously, depending upon conditions, you may have to clean your shoes pretty frequently. Um, if it's dry and sunny, and then you may not have to do very much to clean them and take care of them. But we're going to go through what we go through uh, to take care of our shoes. And we live in the Pacific Northwest, so we ride in the rain, we ride in the cold, we ride on the trainers, we ride outdoors all the time. Again, over 10,000 miles on both of these uh, sets of shoes. So we're gonna show you how we take care of those. Uh, the tools that we use to take care of our shoes, um, this is probably our most commonly used tool. This is a, a horsehair brush from Kiwi. You can buy these just about anywhere. You can buy them at uh, DSW. You can buy them off of Amazon. I'll put some links um, below for some of the products that we use. But this is probably the most common tool that we use to clean our shoes. And this just gets any dust, debris, road grime off of your shoes. Um, I keep one of these, I, I have a couple of them. I keep one where I clean my shoes, which I clean them in the bathtub. Uh, seems kind of strange, but honestly, it's, it's the easiest. Um, after you're done, you make a mess, you just wash the mess away. But I also keep these in my glove box because every once in a while you show up to a race and you are staging in an area where you've got gross dirt, grime, and mud and it gets in your cleats and good luck getting that out. So I've been known to take this to the start line of a race and hit my cleats with it to get all that crap out of there because there's nothing worse than trying to get started in a race and you can't even clip in because there's too much junk. And then you just quickly toss it to the side and hopefully it's there when you come back. Um, you know, usually it is. People don't want to run off with your, your shoe care product. That's our most commonly used tool. Our second most commonly used tool is a cleaning sponge. There's a specific brand of these. Um, they're they're uh, sold by this bald guy with an earring in. I'm not gonna mention their name. But those are really, really expensive for what they are. And you don't need to spend a lot of money on these. These are, this particular one is a uh, an Amazon knockoff and I buy them in multi-packs and they're way, way cheaper. Which is good because all of your hardware on your shoes, they're just gonna shred these anyway. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. It's a melamine sponge. There's nothing special to it. You get it wet, you rub it on the shoe, and it cleans things off, especially uh, black marks, like what I've got on the end here. You can get those taken care of pretty easily. Uh, not perfect, but again, after 10,000 miles, if all you've got is a couple little minor black marks here and there, you're doing okay. Now, we ride in the wet all the time, uh, and something that I see a lot of people do is the old newspaper trick. They wad up a couple newspapers and shove them inside their shoes to uh, take care of drying their shoes after they get wet. Sure, that may work, we're happy for you if it does, uh, but what I'd recommend for drying your shoes, very simply, remove your insoles. Uh, if you're using, doesn't matter if you're using the stock insoles or if you're using custom insoles like this Superfeet Carbon, 
Um, remove the insoles. You can't dry a shoe um, with the insole in place. There's stuff that still gets in there, plus there's probably plastic on there which could melt. And in this case, uh, the Boogeyman and I both have separate shoe dryers, because who wants to share a shoe dryer? Uh, his are portable, so when we travel with his, he can take them in a suitcase. But it's as simple as you set the shoe on here, and you set it to dry. Super easy, uh, great tool to have, very cheap. Again, I'll put a couple links uh, in the comments below, so you can take a look at these on Amazon. Um, I've been able to dry my shoes in as little as an hour and a half if they were absolutely soaking wet. Uh, I don't like using shoe covers if I don't have to. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the miles you see on these shoes, only a few of them have had shoe covers on them, and that's just when the weather is absolutely disgusting and, um, and it's just pouring rain and it's freezing cold. Other than that, I try to avoid shoe covers. Uh, I just, they make my feet feel uncomfortable. I get too hot. Uh, it makes me sweaty, and then honestly, that's just gross. You're getting them wet from the inside out too. And honestly, they don't keep water out. Uh, they, they just keep the dirt off, and I can clean the dirt off. Uh, and that brings us to one of the last things that I recommend, and that is these uh, little um, activated carbon uh, insoles. Again, I'll put some links in the comments down below, but when I store my shoes, uh, it's just as easy for me to slip these in here and uh, store them in the bag that they come with. This keeps the smell down on the shoes, so you want to take a whiff? No? I mean, yeah, they're shoes with 10,000 miles on them and they don't smell that bad. I mean, they actually really don't smell that bad at all. Um, <clears throat> and that's because I keep these in there. Now the trick to these is uh, real simple. Again, it's activated charcoal. I think I said activated carbon, activated charcoal. Um, you can feel it in there and they do absorb the odors. They don't last forever, but uh, you can buy them in like six packs. Again, I'll put some links down below. And the, uh, the trick to these is when they get kind of logged up with the smells of your shoes, you just toss them out in the sunshine for a couple hours. I know we, we don't always have sun, sun, sunshine here in the Northwest, but toss them out in the sun, direct sun for a couple hours, and then they're ready to go again. Uh, you can probably get a good year's worth of use out of these, and they really keep your shoes from getting nasty. Uh, they're particularly great for when you travel and you have to keep your shoes tucked away in a tight bag. They keep the shoes from getting really stinky. Um, so that's, that's our shoe care regimen. Again, 10,000 miles on these plus. Uh, there are some signs of wear, of course, I and mean, you're going to have that happen. Uh, a good quality shoe is going to have replaceable parts like heel cups, uh, toe, uh, whatever those are called. But um, you know, if you, if you take care of your shoes, they're going to last a long time. And when you invest $500 in a pair of shoes, you really want them to last more than a season. That's, that's awfully tragic when you have to throw those away. Uh, white socks, that's easy to take care of. You toss them in the wash with some bleach um, and just don't get them that gross. So that's our shoe care regimen. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I know it's kind of a weird video, but let's face it, everybody's got to take care of their shoes. So uh, keep looking pro, keep racing. Of course, right now you're racing on Zwift, so keep doing that. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and pretty soon we'll be able to get these shoes back out on the road into a real race and, and not only look pro, but feel pro too. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you like the video, uh, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We really like subscribers. We're getting really close to a thousand. We'd love to get there soon. And uh, we'd love it if you share the video too. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you next time.